Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about my handheld setup for the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. So I have a gimbal setup, I have a tripod setup, monopod, and then I have my handheld setup. I thought it would be nice to make a video just to show the options that I use for a handheld setup. Will it work for everybody? No, it probably won't. It is a little bit on the heavy side, but it works for me. Once you mount these cameras in a cage they become modular and it just opens you up to a plethora really options for mounting all of your accessories such as grips and handles and batteries and monitors and microphones so let's get right to it uh, once you put side grips or side handles on your uh, rig it widens your stance and it allows you to move you know in a little bit better way so I I didn't opt for the comfortable, the very comfortable looking wooden hand grip. I opted for these top handles that I'm using as side handles. And I did that for a couple of reasons. One is budget for all three of these handles. I think they're like 20, about $26 each. Anything you see in the video, uh, there will be links to it down below and you know, feel free to check it out. So for all three of these handles comes in under the price of what some of the wooden grip handles are. So that was one reason. Uh, I wanted to widen the stance, so I put both handles on. That's my second reason. And widening the stance, you know, it allows you to move a lot smoother. Uh, because I have a monitor up here, I don't have to look at the screen on the back of the camera. So a lot of times I can pull it in tight uh, to my chest or my stomach if I'm shooting down low. Uh, the handles are nice and sturdy you can pull it in really tight and just you know pivot your body you get a smoother motion so it, it, that part all works now these are ARRI mount so they mount real quickly they mount in the same spot every time uh, you also can twist them and mount them a different way if you want but another reason why I chose them is because they can do double duty uh, if I want to I can steal one of these handles off I have other cameras with cages and if I want to need a top handle for another camera I can just steal it off when I'm not using this put it back uh, it, so that's basically the two main reasons I chose them budget friendly and they can do double duty so let's move on to battery and monitor so I'm using the port keys monitor and this battery is just a generic battery that I got off of Amazon you can get these for about this one's like $36 and I have two of them I have a second one here and I'm going to make a video to show how I did the mount the mount is very simple it's just you do have to take the battery apart uh, it's not hard mount a cheese plate and you have a second battery uh, with these let's see this battery as you can see it has your 12 volt port and then it has uh, USB it has an on and off switch I labeled it on and off it doesn't tell you that which is on and which is off you kind of have to guess at that it's a cheap battery but it's a good option uh, it I can get with the monitor I can get easily two and a half hours of shooting easily if I'm not shooting with the monitor you can pretty much shoot all day so I have both the monitor and the battery if you can see that mounted on a 15 millimeter rail that the mount is already there in the handle like just like you see this one here it's got a 15 millimeter hole right through there the clamp so I have it mounted and when I if you're new to rails as I as I am and was uh, I wanted to clamp it down nice and tight so that it would not move at all and I found that I couldn't do that it still moves but real quickly, I realized that I did want it to move because this allows me now to pivot my monitor without putting it on a, a ball head or something like that. I know a lot of people like to use articulating arms and ball heads, but I find that this minimal setup like that, it works for me. And of course, now I have an airplane flying overhead. Uh, so monitor is mounted, battery is mounted. I made my own splitter cable comes out of the battery uh, goes around it's kind of hard to see in this video but I have it run through the 
15 millimeter rod, I have it run through there. It comes out right here and goes around and connects to the monitor. I run it through the rod just to keep it out of the way and make it look a little bit neater. I have a homemade bungee and I have a video for these, uh, how to make your own homemade bungees if you're on a budget and they, you can make any size you want and make as many as you want. So I custom made a bungee just for this to uh, keep my cables nice and tight. And that's pretty much it for battery and monitor. Now moving over here to microphone, typically I don't shoot with a microphone on the camera unless I'm doing some voiceover stuff just for myself and I actually will, you know, I kind of flip it around like that and use it like that. If I was actually doing an interview or something, I was shooting that, I would have my assistant with the big road mic on a boom pole and we would record it separately and sync it in post. But I do have microphone mounted there. Now, I have the SSD. I have the SanDisk. This is a one terabyte. I have the SSD mounted here and it's mounted on, again, one of these carbon fiber rails. And the reason I kind of went with this setup, I wanted to keep the SSD where it's easily accessible so I can take it off to go dump footage. But I also wanted to retain using the original cable that came with the SSD. I found that using this original short cable that came with the SanDisk, I have no transmission problems. It records fine and never gives me a problem. I have gotten good quality cables that are longer, like one, you know, 12 inches, one foot, but that's too long for what I need. And we got some disturbances in the background there. So a longer cable, then I gotta like, you know, hide it and do stuff like that. And that's just a problem. And any of the short cables that I bought, if anybody knows a good brand for a short cable that will last more than 30 days, put a, uh, you know, put a link to it in the comment section. I'd like to check it out. So that's why I keep the SSD right here. It's just nice and accessible. You loosen one screw and it pops right out. And I also have, which is on here all the time, I have the lock for the HDMI and for the SSD. HDMI, I have it just kind of routed around and comes out here. This was like the shortest good quality cable that I could find. Again, link for it down below. Uh, so over here, when you buy these small rig carbon fiber rods, they come two to a pack. So I had an extra one from the one that I had over here. I just kind of stuck it in here. Uh, I thought maybe it would be a good spot if I needed to mount a light. I typically don't shoot with a light, but if I needed to mount a light or another accessory, I just kind of stuck it there. After I stuck it there, I found that it kind of works as another handle, as kind of a secondary handle. A lot of times you have three options here to hit record. You have, you have this button here, you have the screen on the back of here, and you also can hit record on the monitor, but I find hitting it right on and off here works. It's, it's every, if I'm touching the screen, sometimes you touch it two or three times and you, you stop it and start it again by accident or whatever. I found that this is my best option. So a lot of times I reach around, I turn it on right there, but I also find myself sometimes using this little rod as a handle. So that's just kind of an add-on, wasn't something I really planned on. Now, as far as lenses go, right now I have a 24 to 105, has image stabilization, uh, works pretty good. Here you can see some handheld footage that I shot here the other day, was just my wife picking vegetables at a vegetable farm. But the video comes out really, really good. But I also like to put on the 16 to 35 f4 which also has image stabilization. Sometimes I use my Sigma 18 to 35, but I tend to use that most on the slider or on the gimbal because it doesn't have image stabilization. Then a lot of times I finish off by putting on my Tiffin uh, variable ND. Um, it, it seems to work. It's a 
moderately moderately priced variable ND and it works for me. The color shift isn't all that bad and I can usually correct any color shift in post. But anyway, that is my handheld setup uh, for, and we got the stunt planes up here again. So that is my handheld setup for my Blackmagic Pocket 6K. And I'm gonna do a video uh, here in a few minutes actually about how I did this this uh, battery. Port keys monitor, I love it. Uh, it does have a few little quirks. Uh, one of the things is they dollar you to death. They want you to buy uh, the Bluetooth module to add on and everybody knows today that you can put Bluetooth into anything. This module could be incorporated inside of this monitor with no problem, but they want to get you for another 120 bucks. As far as seeing in bright sunlight, the monitor is amazing. I have no problems with that. So I do like it. Um, there's not, it won't focus my lenses. You can't focus from the monitor as it kind of says in the description that it will work with some lenses. Well, it doesn't work with any of mine. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with this setup. Works for me. Maybe it would work for you or maybe some of it works for you. Hey, if you like this video, hit like, hit subscribe, come back to this channel and I'll talk about more stuff that I bought and paid for with my own money. Okay, everybody, have a great day. Thanks for watching.